There are currently 22 brawlers in Brawl Stars, and every single one of them has their own unique playstyle, as well as the best way to master them. And today, I wanted to give you guys my best single tip to playing every single brawler in the game as somebody who has been playing it since the very first day of beta release. Hope you enjoy. Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kyle Simon, it's time to brawl. Now today we're going to be going over one single tip for all 22 brawlers, um, so 22 total tips, and uh, some of them are going to be really simple like Shelly's tip, but uh, others are actually going to be very game changing in the way that you actually play that brawler, like Pam's, so you definitely don't want to miss that one. Now I've got way more tips than just one for every single brawler and for more of those tips make sure you guys check out two playlists that you can find in the description of my videos. Now the first is going to be my brawler guide playlist where we're actually going to take an in-depth look into every single brawler in the game. And my second is going to be my pro interview playlist where I interview the best players for a specific brawler after they've pushed number one on the top of the ladder. I'm still going through all the brawlers for each of those series so make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you do not miss a single one of them. With that being said let's go and start off with the trophy road brawlers now for Shelly this tip is pretty simple you want to get to as close as you possibly can to enemy brawlers by using the walls and bushes in order to do so Shelly thrives the most when she is up close on an enemy brawler but the exception is going to be brawlers that deal lots of burst damage like bull where unless she has her super she cannot outburst a bull before he takes her out so in that kind of situation where you do not have your super charged up you do want to keep your distance from a bull so that he cannot fire back at you yeah I know the Shelly tip was pretty weak sauce, <laughs> but what can I say? She's a pretty simple brawler. Now my best tip for Nita is to peek around those walls just far enough so that her attack will actually travel through the wall and hit an enemy brawler while she is protected by the wall. If you do master this, it will make it incredibly difficult for the enemy team to actually take her out and deal damage to her. For Colt, you should lead your shots where you think the enemy player is going to move and then mirror the enemy's movement pattern so as many bullets actually hit them as possible. Now this takes practice and fast reflexes, but it's definitely going to improve your Colt gameplay. Now for Bull, my Number one tip is to have patience in getting up close to the enemy brawler. Juking is incredibly important for Bull, and you shouldn't use his health as a way to get close to enemy brawlers if you do not have to. You can do this by moving in random patterns that aren't predictable, obviously using walls, hiding in bushes, or even falling back at those moments where it's not ideal for him to go up on an enemy brawler. My biggest tip for Jesse is learning how to use her turret positioning to counter every brawler in the game. Against long range brawlers, you want to place it behind a wall on their side of the map so that they cannot shoot at it from a distance. Against short range brawlers, you want to place it out in the open on your side of the map so that they will not not be able to use walls or grass to get up close to the turret without taking a lot of damage. Now when it comes to playing Brock, if you have a brawler that is hiding behind a wall or is running toward a wall, the best thing that you can do is aim your shots right next to the corners of those walls so that they will likely hit the brawler on their way over there. But not only does this increase the chance that you will actually hit a brawler, once the rocket is fired it travels in a direct path but then once it explodes it actually blows up in a circular fashion and that circle can actually reach around the corner of those walls, meaning you can hit brawlers that are hiding behind those walls if the rocket explodes at max distance right in the perfect tile. Regarding Dynamite, his attacks actually take time to explode. If you throw his attacks really close up to you, then there will actually be time when they are just sitting on the ground and the enemy player will be like, oh, look, that's Dynamite Stick. I think I'm gonna walk away from that before it actually explodes. So my big tip for Dynamite is actually throwing it so that the Dynamites will actually explode once it hits the ground immediately so that they're less predictable. Now regarding Bo's attacking pattern, you can actually swap between burst damage and area control depending on how you move while he is firing those three arrows. If you are moving to the left while you attack with his attack, all three arrows will hit in the same spot dealing a lot of burst damage. If you move to the right while he is letting off those arrows, then they will actually spread out further, which will increase the area control that he has. My biggest tip for Bo is mastering these movement patterns so that you can actually swap between the two different attacks, depending on whether you want burst damage or area control. Congratulations, guys. You made it to the Trophy Road Brawlers. Now, 
it is time for the rare brawlers. Now the trick to mastering El Primo is to learn which brawlers he can ignore the attacks of and which brawlers he cannot and should juke. Attacks with a lot of consistent damage like Pams and Colts should not be ignored and you should absolutely focus on dodging those as much as possible. Attacks that have a lot of burst damage like Bulls or Shellies should not be ignored and you should actually be very cautious about getting up close to those enemy brawlers. Attacks that have low DPS like Crows or Barleys can be basically be ignored if you're at full HP and you can just run at them with full speed and take them out. My biggest tip for Barley is to aim his attacks to cover choke points in popular places that enemies move instead of attacking directly where the enemy brawler is. This way, they actually have to walk through your attack and take damage if they want to get to where they originally were planning on going, or they have to completely take a different route, which you can cover that route as well, so it's not a big deal. Now, due to Poco's fast reload speed and low burst potential, you should quickly use all three attacks on enemies and then fall back to reload in safely before then coming out and spamming his shots all over again. And then I have a, a duh tip, and that is just to pay attention to your teammates' health as well as your own health so you can heal them if they need it as well. Now we talked about the rare brawlers. Let's talk about the rare brawlers that are super. Like, you know, like the super rare brawlers. Maybe I should wear a cape for this next part. Brawl Stars! I figure you're just going to be playing Ricochet like Colt, firing directly at your enemy brawlers. Um, then, uh, yeah, then just play Colt. My biggest tip to playing Ricochet is practicing bouncing shots off of walls so you can attack around corners so you can control huge parts of the map including really big corridors and increase his range now he is one of the hardest brawlers to master but once you actually learn the art of banking his shots off of those walls you can shred through enemy players on the right maps for rico for daryl you should focus on using his super to get close to enemy brawlers that have a low to medium amount of hp you should use his super when a brawler is not close to his teammates so that you actually Actually avoid getting 2v1 and if the enemy player has a ton of burst potential like a spike or a bull or something like that then you should wait until they've expended all of their shots so that you can go in there and take them out pretty safely do not super on an enemy player that has a ton of HP or Daryl will unlikely be able to handle them now for Penny her turret has a huge potential to wreak havoc if you have it up for the majority of the match. That means that early on, you should focus on charging it up as quickly as possible, ideally without getting taken out yourself, and be careful where you place it. The best place to put it is on your side of the map, protected by walls, so that enemy players can't actually get to it without either taking you out or a teammate first. Now let's go ahead and talk about the epic brawlers. Now because Piper has one of the slowest reload speeds in the game, it is very important for you to manually aim your shots and conserve at least one but ideally two of her ammo slots until those moments when you know you can actually take out an enemy brawler. Doing that and practicing aiming her shots similar to Brock will do wonders on your Piper gameplay. My biggest tip for Pam is to attack similarly to how you would with Colt rather than how you would with Poco's attack. The reason why is because she shoots out nine projectiles in total and only two go to the left and two go to the right but all five go right in the middle in a straight line similar to how Colt's bullets actually travel. So you actually maximize damage by leading her shots and then mirroring the enemy's movements. Now due to Frank's shot delay, Frank has a unique weakness that requires him to keep his distance from enemy brawlers. Yet, he has one of the uh, shortest ranges in the game. So the trick to playing Frank is actually to stay at that perfect range so that he can actually hit enemy brawlers without easily being hit himself. Okay guys, up next we have the mythic brawlers. Now Mortis should actually be played similarly to Daryl where he should target squishier brawlers that have a low to medium amount of health or those brawlers that have expended all their ammo so they can't actually deal a ton of damage to him. On top of that, because I just gave you Daryl's tip for Mortis, uh, <laughs> it's very important for you to actually manually aim your shots so that he does not actually automatically attack into walls because walls will actually stop his movement and that just ends up wasting an attack. That being said, if you are out in the opening and there's not a worry about walls actually stopping his attack, you can feel free to auto aim them. Now for Terra, she has literally some of the worst stats in the game and she makes up for it by having one of the most impactful supers in the game so my biggest tip for Terra is to focus on charging up her super and then save it for the perfect moment and that might be a point where you can actually create an opportunity to score a brawl ball point or 
might be to take out a brawler that has a lot of gems and gem grab. It also might be a situation where you can use her super on two brawlers and then throw out three quick attacks, taking those brawlers out and recharging her super back up. And of course, lastly, guys, we are in the home stretch with the legendary brawlers. My biggest tip to playing Spike is that he is one of the most important brawlers to conserve shots with because of his low reload speed and his regular attacks high impact. If he doesn't have ammo, he will always lose a close-up fight, but he wins close-up fights when he does have ammo against most brawlers. My recommendation is to use his first shot to check bushes, uh, poke for small damage from the distance or even around walls or whatever you need to do to utilize that first shot, but then save those last two ammo slots for when you know you can take out an enemy brawler. And then also keep your distance from people because he's really squishy. Now, despite Crow's really, really epic super, he should actually primarily be played as a long distance poker than an assassin. You should focus on keeping your distance from enemy players and just attacking them just a little bit of damage over a long period of time keeping that poison on them so that they have to fall back and so that your teammates can actually finish them off for leon my biggest tip for him is to wait until you are completely hidden by the bushes before going invisible if you do it as your character is fading from view because you either just walked into the bushes or you just attacked or an enemy player just like hit you with a little bit of damage then his smoke cloud that goes out when he does go invisible will be seen by the enemy team and they will know that he's invisible and be able to plan accordingly but if you wait just a little bit and then activate it they won't know and this will make it a lot less likely that they'll be checking for you um, or expecting you and that'll definitely allow you to get kills much easier i want to know which of these tips were game changing for you as well as any other tips you would like to share so drop a comment in the section below letting me know i wanted to give a huge thank you to my youtube members and my patreon sponsors for helping support my channel in such a big way and for now this is carol's time ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.